Tonight's guest is Eric Beard. Eric, welcome to the show. Thank you, Vic. Well, thank you for coming on. We appreciate your time. Eric, please give us a brief bio on yourself. I'm a, a young man. I'm 28 years old. I've worked in construction most of my life. I grew up on a farm. I had a abusive stepfather, so I spent a lot of time in the woods. I lived in the woods out there in Waldo, Alabama. Most people can't find it on the map. <laughs> they think it's an old joke. But uh, I grew up out there. I like animals. I've come up around animals. I got a good heart. I try to help people. I've always been an athlete. I've always been pretty brave about everything. That's it. Besides you being abused as a kid, it sounds like you had a really good childhood, especially all the time in the woods. It was a great place to grow up. It really was. You know, we worked really hard, but we were really blessed. We had chickens and goats and stuff. We had actually fighting chickens. So, you know, there's a lot of work involved in them things. But, uh, and we cleared off a lot of land. We lived on 48 acres out there in Walter. My, my grandfather, my stepfather's father, he actually sold over half of it. He had a lot of property out there. Railroad cut through there and bought a bunch of his land, too, when he got out of Vietnam, the Korean War and stuff. It's a pretty nice place, man. It's right there in Waldo by the National Forest. You got creeks and stuff to run through there. It's a nice place. It really is. Which National Forest is it? Talladega National Forest, I believe. And then it runs on up around the mountain, up Chee Hall and uh, Ashland and some small towns nobody knows about on little country roads that go around it. Wolf Oak is one of them. It's the road I lived on. On a dead end, you drive down a dirt road for about a mile off the side of a county road, Wolf Oak Road. And uh, we used to have to walk it <laughs> all the way up a hill. And uh, we used to go up there to my papa's house. And as soon as we got there, there was milk jugs, about 80 of them filled up. I can remember being five years old. It was kindergarten, toting them bad boys. A few miles to water all these chickens. We had a bunch of them, thousands. It was tough work. And it always kept us busy. We was always cutting down woods and making fires and burning off land and cutting stuff down with machetes and putting up fences. And we was always out there working it was i remember when i was real young it wasn't nothing but a you know a yard around this thing and a bunch of woods and then as, as more stuff got cleared off because papa had people come out there and log especially when there was a bunch of land to begin with you know i think it only pushed stuff back and they come back i don't know this is a nice place yeah the place i live out now it's spooky it sounds like a great place to grow up. I can only imagine what it must have been like to be a kid like that and grow up right next to a national forest. What was the most frightening thing that happened to you in that forest? First thing that ever happened to me in that forest is that's where I got to know God, not coming up in any kind of religious family or anything. God came to me in the woods, and that scared me. It, it scared me, and I experienced something, you know, and... But not long after that, I was I was young, but I just I got just got the feeling like, you know, I found dead animals and bones and stuff out there all the time. My brother even brought back a human skull. My older brother, we find bones and stuff out there all the time. But as a kid, you don't you don't really think about it. You don't you're not really scared of stuff like that. But now that I think about it, there were some creepy woods. <laughs> You know, I actually found a graveyard out there way back in there. I don't even know if it was still on our property or not. It's not like there's a a fence, you know what I mean? <laughs> the woods just keep going, you know? And, uh, I, yeah, I found a graveyard. Some of the dates on it go back to the 18s, and it's just in the middle of the woods. Like, there's, I can't think of anybody that would know that it was there. It's not well kept or nothing. It's just nothing grows around it. It's weird. It was weird, but the strangest thing in them woods was I just, one day I just felt scared, and that was strange for me, and I just felt like I was being watched, so I left, and as I was leaving, I just seemed to get more anxious and more afraid, like something was even following me, so I, I, I left the woods that day. I actually played a video game with my older brother, and I didn't do that a lot. 
you know, we got it pretty rough from our papa too when we were down there at his house, even if uh if we were doing doing nothing but just playing a game or something, you know, we ain't no telling. But uh the next day, the very next day, I got off the bus. We watered all the chickens and stuff. I got to walking down the side of the field. We got a chicken field and then another fence on it. And then at the bottom of it, a big goat field. You know, I don't know how many acres are in it. I'd say at least 10 acres of field. So you walk down at least 10 acres down a fence line. It's got another gate down towards the bottom. There's a small wood line in between it and a big pear tree in the middle. East. You couldn't eat all the pears. And the goats couldn't even eat all the pears on this tree. It was two pear trees that grew together. I ain't never seen one like it since, really. But I walked on down that fence line on the outskirts and hopped off into the woods. <laughs> this is a completely different direction than I went the last time. And I, I've gotten lost in these woods before. There are some big woods, but I've never been really afraid out there. Well, the feeling started coming over me a little bit again the further out I got. And I'm already, as far as football fields go, I don't know, at least 10 away from the house. And I'm just now hitting the very back wood line at the fence and the, you know, the woods extend, but to the left, they go that way and all the way 10 football fields back up towards the house and nothing but woods off to the left. And now to the back and around the other side of the field, you got, you know, and further on back in the woods, this is where the railroad tracks cut through. And, uh, I'm walking out there and I start feeling that way again. Like, yeah, something's, something's watching me. So, you know, I, I pick up a stick. I just start smacking a tree. I smacked that tree hard a few times with a stick until I broke it. It wasn't really like a very dead stick, but it was, you know, it was broke. But it wasn't really dead. There's like a pine forest up in there. The rest of it's not like that. The rest of it's kind of like hilly and violet, you know, valley. And some of it's thick with thickets in it. You know, briars and bushes, but some, you know, other parts you can see out through there a good ways. And where I was, it was kind of opened up, and I was on top of a, a hill type almost, and going down it. You could see pretty good, but that's when I felt the worst. But I couldn't see anything at all. But I just knew something was looking at me to the point to where. I started going back the way I came, and then I felt like that was a bad idea, so I cut back the way I was going actually towards the house through the woods, which now I'm actually went into the woods at the end of the fence line. I went into the woods that way a good little ways, like at least a quarter mile, if not a half a mile. Like I was making my way on down through there, you know. Now I'm slap dead in the middle of the woods out there. As far as I know, as far as I've discovered and went around, and uh, it's thick in between there, and there's there's a hill and our shooting range is right there in the direction I'm headed. So I'm I'm trying to get up out of there, and I'm heading this direction, and I just start to feel so anxious that I start running. Vic, I started running, and I got up out of there. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't want to look back type thing, but I never saw nothing. But I was I was truly scared. And that was that was strange for me. And anybody would tell you that knows me, that's that's strange. Most people but that same night, my stepfather had got home, you know, and he's the type of guy when he comes in, he's looking for something to be upset about. You know, he's a, you can move the remote and you don't know if you're gonna get slapped or cussed out or you know, the mental abuse sometimes is worse than even getting, you know, hit or anything. You know what? And uh, he comes in, you know, so, you know, I'm, I'm not even making eye contact with him, but we're we're finna eat or something or just finished eating, maybe. You know, my mama worked long hours. And uh, he said, boy, take out that, uh, you know, cuss words and garbage and you know, now and burn it. You know, I, so Mama gave me a lot of two bags. I took them. Now I trash pile. <laughs> it was a long way off, and it was actually 
on the end of the shooting range, the other end that we didn't that we didn't shoot toward, you know, dirt had been piled up over there. And then it kind of dropped off into a valley. And then, you know, the land comes back up and down and there's trees and woods back that way. But it had been cleared out just just to shoot down, you know. That we used to chop down trees with guns and stuff. Which now that I think about it, as much as we shot, like I don't, I don't know why, but I, now that I, you know, there was so many blackberry bushes out there and stuff. It would, it was really a great place for like a. Now that I think of it, an animal or anything, but I'm walking down through there, and I, I was still shook up from being in the woods earlier. I didn't see nothing, but I was just, I'm shook up from it. And now it's nighttime, and I'm in the same area that I felt like this, walking down through there, except for now I'm out of the woods in the open, but I know that, you know, if I were in the woods, I could see out from there, you know, 200 from the top of that hill with the wood line before it falls back down, you know. I could see for, you could see for a good ways, you know. You could actually see the houses and stuff, and nobody could look up in the woods and see you in many, many places, you know. That's why I felt so comfortable out there. So I'm walking down through there and I get to the first little barn and uh, I throw the bags off in the back of the barn. I'm scared. I I said, you know what, I'll burn them tomorrow. Nobody will know, but it's such a long way. Now I can't just walk straight back up to the house. I'm sitting there kind of waiting and I I tell myself, you know, no, 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 you're not going to get this right. Don't be scared. So I grab the bags. I'm walking down through there. There's some, we call them weeds, you know, just tall grass really all around. But I walk down through there. It's up on a hill where we dug out the burn hole. It's about 25 foot long, 14 foot wide. All the dirt's pulled back up on top of the hill. I had it graded to shoot towards where it sloped down, you know, in the big hill, come up around a little valley thing through there. Water would fill up through there sometimes and run down to a pond out there in the middle of the woods. So I got the bags. I'm going down there. I throw the first bag before I can even see the pile. And there's a big thicket, some bushes off to the right, and some huge oak trees, like, super big oak trees and stuff in the old red barn down there on the other side of it. So structures around it, all the woods are to my left. I thought that first bag and uh, it's kind of cleared off around there, but the woods are all around the burn pile and that barn after that. There's, that's the end of the road as far as you can walk without going in the woods, unless you go to the fence line and, uh, I walked down there with the second bag. I held it up over the hole. I pulled out the lighter. And as soon as I lit the lighter to burn the bag and drop it in there, I heard the loudest crack, like a loud stick crack. And I looked over in that direction. I didn't I didn't see anything at first because I was looking like right at the noise and it was I noticed it was a giant figure. It was solid black. I couldn't make out no details. The moonlight was on the back side. And it was just massive. It was huge. I followed. I, I really bypassed the legs after I figured out it was a animal or something. And I looked up, and, and it just the shoulders captivated me. The shoulders were huge. Like, you could see the muscle definition hanging off the side of it. And I looked down the arms a little bit, but I had to look back up because you could just see the fur hanging off the side of the shoulders from how massive the the muscles on the shoulders were and how wide the chest was. It's as wide as two men standing side by side, you know. It was just, it was massive. And I'm, I'm 40 foot away from it, 35 to 40 foot away from it. <laughs> it's hot. And, uh, and I'm, I'm froze to death. I can't move. And every hair on my body is standing up while I'm looking at this thing. But, uh, can't move I can't speak nothing I just I'm looking at it and I'm looking at the head area so I can't really make it out I didn't see no ears or nothing like that the hair that the hair was so bushy around the head area I couldn't really tell but it was just so big 
I couldn't really make heads or tails of what it was at the time. Just, I'd never seen nothing. <laughs> you know, Bigfoot but never talked about, you know, as, as seen a werewolf movie, and that's exactly what I thought it was. That, that's exactly what I thought it was. And I, I couldn't make out no descriptions as it was looking straight at me. You know, I couldn't make make out any parts of the face, but I, I <laughs> this is like, this is all between like seven seconds, but it like I told you, I was just stuck for that time. I couldn't move. And a little glimmer just hit its eye like a little light. And I threw my arms up and I shouted, oh, crap, as loud as I could. I used the worst word than that. <laughs> I'm about 13 years old, 14 years old, probably. And I took off running as fast as I could. And as soon as I got that out of my mouth, this thing, I guess, took its first leap or step. But I could feel the ground vibrating. I could hear trees and sticks and limbs breaking and crashing like, like a freight train was going through that. That's that's the word. Yeah, a freight train. And I, like I said, I could, I knew exactly where it was because you could feel it. <laughs> His feet hitting the ground. I startled it when I screamed. I believe. But it's running almost parallel with me, but off to the left more towards the wood line. And uh. I'm running as fast as I can. I decide that my parents' house is too far away, and I cut to my papa and then this house, and I run in there. I snatch open the screen door on the porch. I didn't even push the button. I just pulled it open. And when I got to the door, I hit the door. My papa got there in about five seconds. He ain't never got to the door that quick. He must have been in the living room. And uh, he had his gun. <laughs> He had his gun, too. He, or, no, he went and got his gun immediately because he didn't even ask me nothing. He just went and got his gun immediately because I was so scared and almost and almost crying at that point. I was so scared. I, mean, I wasn't crying, but I, it's really, like, kind of how I see myself looking now that I think about it because I had some desperation on my face, I know. And uh, he immediately went out on the porch. My nana was like, what is it? What is it? What's wrong? What happened? My brother, he's a little bit older than me. He's adopted. He lived down there with them. And uh, he was like, hey, what happened? What, what was it? What was it? What did you see? I said, I seen a werewolf. She said, well, what did it look like? I said, well, it was huge and big and it had hair all over it. And its shoulders were this wide, and I showed them with my, you know, I mean, I'm not tiny at 14, but, you know, I'm probably stretching my arms all the way out trying to show them, you know. And I can't even reach up high enough to, I remember not being able to reach up high enough to show them where the shoulders were. And she said, you seem big for it, but, you know, I'm not so sure, but that's what I believe. And, you know, it scared me for a long time until it didn't, and I actually wanted to see another Bigfoot. And that's where I had my next experience. So I've been fishing over there in off Talladega Creek for a long time. But they got the gold mines up there. They shut down a long time ago. And uh, nobody really used that bridge no more. They built a new bridge. And they have like a little dam thingy there. You know, people just I, I stopped coming around that area. And I, yeah, I went out there and fished a good bit, it being close to my house, you know. I could walk down the railroad tracks and, and get to the back side of that creek and go around up the weather. It was better fishing back up that way, down by the gold mine, but you had to had to drive to get there on down the creek and then come up it. And that's actually the widest spot of the creek is where all, all kinds of sloughs and stuff come together. It really looks like a lake out there in the middle of nowhere, you know? Not many people know about it. I'm on my kayak. I'm fishing. I've been coming out there a lot up above the dam, and I just put in, I go up creek. I've never seen anybody out there on a kayak up creek. I've seen some people down there at the bottom right there that put in their kayaks and go down the creek, uh, you know, and try to come out over there. And Let's see where they come out at. I don't know. Uh, some people, not many people even kayak this creek. It's not as popular because it's more, it's it's more wild than, than most of them. You know what I mean? It's It's not camp. I'm coming up there. I'm fishing. I'm wearing them out. All of a sudden, I hear crunch, crunch, crunch. Now I've been making no noise, and I've just been fishing and 
I've been sitting there for a while trying to spark because I had a couple of hits. And uh, I had a couple of good fish. I actually put one of them back that was smaller because I had some good fish. And uh, <laughs> that's all I was going to You know, I was taking my time. And I hear this crunch, crunch. Now, it's a big ravine up this way. And it's even more of like a cliff over here on this side. Nothing but rocks. And like, you know, I just had this nothing being over on the right side but i hear this and i know there's a little trail off on the left side but at this point the trail is so thin that you don't even know if it's a trail that you hike on or walk on you know what i mean so many people come out there and uh at this point i'm pretty good ways out there i'm at least a mile out there and at this point it's national forest you know the gold mines are up there to the left where it, it connects together and uh I hear, I hear it. It's getting louder. Crunch, 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 crunch. Actually, it might have been shorter than that. Crunch, 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 crunch. Like, I don't know, like long, drawn out footsteps. And uh, it just got louder and louder. I'm thinking, man, I should see whatever, whoever this is or whatever it is. And my mind kind of went straight to Bigfoot. But at the same time, I'm really thinking like, this could be somebody just walking out here. You know, I've seen people walk out here before. You know, I've heard of people coming out here and and camping around. You know, you got to buy, you got to get a key now from the city to go out there to ride four wheelers because I got trails and stuff that they you know, used to mine out there a lot. And uh, it's kind of a little mountain out there, but uh, I'm going down through there. No, I'm just, I'm just sitting there listening. Yes, I'm sitting there listening. And it's just, it's got so loud to the point where I feel like I should see this. But it was so high up on the ravine and walking through like a thick area. I didn't see how it was moving through there like that, but it was. And I never seen nothing. I just, it faded off. But it was so loud that I couldn't believe I couldn't see anything. And I was almost convinced it was Bigfoot, but I let it slip my mind because I'm, I'm, I'm fishing now. And it just, it, it veered off kind of back away from the creek like a U. It's almost like I did a U right there. But I didn't make any noise or nothing until I heard it fade off hard. And I rolled on up the creek and now some hours it done went by. It's probably, it's probably I've been out there since 8, 8 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning maybe. It's probably like 5 o'clock. I, like, if, if I paddle hard, I'll be back at seven o'clock you know <laughs> it'll be almost dark and uh my butt gonna start hurting and i seen a snake come up out the creek after a frog and i tried to catch it but it, yeah, i didn't know i didn't really see where it went i couldn't get out my kayak quick enough and uh you know i got up out of there i'm sitting on a rock and the spot where i'm at is like a bend in the creek so like the land on the left side is all coming downhill now and it's coming towards the creek and you can actually see up through that hill a good bit. And I start hearing again. No, forgive me. Before I got to this point, I seen something very strange. Off to the left on the same side of the creek, there was a big rock and like boulder hanging out. And it was in the water and hanging out the water. And I'm just rolling through there real quiet. And out of nowhere, like I seen like, <laughs> I think it was like a little monkey, like a small monkey and it you know i kind of tried to think you know maybe it's an otter because i've seen an otter get up on the side of the creek and they look you know when they're wet like that they look kind of like sleek and like that but <laughs> my arms were too long and i don't remember telling nothing but i just remember like a little monkey looking animal about literally no more than Two and a half foot tall, come out around the side of the rock, and I can't be no more than ten foot away, to me twelve foot away. I ride right around the other side of the rock, like there should be nowhere for it to go. I can see up the hill if it was a run off. But when I got around the other side, I didn't see there was nothing there. That's what made me keep thinking, you know, it must have been an otter. Well, then I, my butt gets to hurt, and I hop out. I hop out on the rock, and uh, I'm sitting there, and I hear the footsteps again coming straight towards me. There's no other direction it can come now because the creek bee is around. It's coming, it's coming my way straight to me. And I just sit there and I'm listening. Now I'm anxious. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm fitting to see Bigfoot again. This is what I wanted. 
or this creature, whatever it was, I wanted to see what it looked like because all I got was a black shadow before, you know? Although I descriptively see the shape of it and stuff like that, it, I just wanted to see it. You know, it's just daylight. And I'm sitting there waiting and I'm hearing crunch, 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 crunch. And it's getting so loud to the point where, like, I feel like I should see this animal coming. Like, it should, it sounds like it's already here, but I don't see nothing. And, and it's starting to freak me out. And it gets so loud to the point where I, like, I know I'm fixing to see whatever it is coming down the hill now. And it, it just dawned on me that I don't want to surprise whatever this is. So I said, hey, you know, kind of loud. And when I did that, I didn't hear another noise, period. I didn't hear nothing. I sat there for about 30 seconds and I put my fishing pole in the back. I threw the fish out of the cooler up there on the side of the uh, bank and I slid off on my belly on my kayak. I left out of there in less than two minutes because I didn't hear another noise and that's what freaked me out the most. Somebody would have said something if it was a person, you know. I slid up out of there and I paddled really fast and went really quietly so I could listen and I didn't hear nothing. I got up out of there. That freaked me out, but at the same time, I wasn't frightened. I wasn't scared. And then uh, after that encounter right there, I had a strong belief that they lived over there in that area. And that was not far from my home. And, you know, it kind of confirmed my belief. But at the same time, I'd never seen what it was. So I can't say it was a Bigfoot or a dog, man. I really can't say the first one was. Well, I live over here in Montford, Alabama now. I live out here on uh, 38 acres. Most of it's field, and it just goes on down for a long way. And the creek line from Coldwater Creek off of Chihaw Mountain is the property line. And uh, ever since I moved out here, man, it's, you know, I felt like there's a predator out here. I really hadn't, like I went down there to the creek, I went fishing and stuff like that. And I, I've even went hunting, and before I could even walk halfway down the field, I found a deer almost dead. It couldn't even stand up. His legs had been gnawed up so much. But it was still alive. I ended it, and uh, we ate the front legs because they were all right. But, uh, you know, my dogs are always bringing up dead deer and dead animal carcass, like, all the time. And, uh, like, the same thing. Like, over here, especially, I feel like, especially in this big field and it being surrounded by the wood line and the woods over here all the way to the left until it gets down to the creek, which is the property line. And it comes all the way up around to my house <laughs> where the railroad tracks are literally on the other side of my house up here at the top of the hill. And I can look down all the way to the bottom of the property line, really to the creek and the little tree line down there. And uh, I just felt like I'm always being watched out here. And so, you know, I got back into research in Bigfoot, which I did a lot of. I watched all the videos on stuff, encrypted and stuff. And, you know, I've always been super interested in werewolves and what I know now to be a dog, man. I've always been very interested in them. But there's never been much about them out there, you know. So I just, I really gave up on trying to learn about that till recently after living out here the last three years. I started researching Bigfoot again. And I come across your show, actually. Dog Man Encounters and Dog Man Radio. And man, I just fell in love. Like, that's all I could really relate to anymore. That's all I wanted to hear about. Because, like, the primal fear that I still had, it couldn't be explained by Bigfoot. Like, I'd be like, yeah, he's just scary. But, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't feel like they, I don't feel like they really are out to get people at all. None of them, really. But, I do at the same time feel like I don't know why I keep seeing things like this and monsters and stuff like that. If they don't, <laughs> if they're not out for certain people, or if, you know, if just me having an encounter has made me super sensitive and aware of my surroundings. And I believe that might be what it is, because when I move around through here, I don't move around like just anybody just walking, be bopping around, maybe even looking at their phone. I don't even take a phone out of my house. I don't. I move and I stop. I move like a predator. Before I move again, I make sure there's nothing else around me. And I don't know why I've always been like that. 
And now I can think back or know or relate now because I, I can't go out there with me. I don't go outside at night like I am right now anymore, and especially not far. And I don't, I don't like to go off in the woods very far by myself anymore. When I used to, it was nothing for me to uh, five miles from the house before I ever get worried about getting lost because I have a great sense of direction, you know. I'm going to quit bragging and tell you that uh, up here, it wasn't long ago, I was walking down the road actually from here. And that's when I, I was trying to get to the store. I just, I needed to get to the store and get some things. I was craving some dip, a dip tobacco. And uh, I'm walking because they impounded my truck or something like that. I don't got a driver's license. The state took my driver's license. And uh, it's about three or four miles to the store. And I'm walking. There's a rural area. I'm walking. There ain't many cars coming up and down the road. I've only seen maybe two. And I'm more than halfway. And it's a long stretch of road across the bridge, across the creek. It's Chocolat Creek. Runs through here, too. They have two creeks over here. They actually come together right here at the bottom of my property line, about a mile past my property line. Coldwater Creek runs into Chocolat Creek. So I'm walking down through there, and from the creek bridge to where I am, you can see a whole mile. The road's just straight, it's flat. You know, there's like little bumps in it, but you can see a long way. And I'm starting to get to the hill area. There's woods on both sides. I maybe walk past, you know, seven, eight houses in that frame, you know, just people don't live close together out here, you know. Like neighbors is, if you can see their house, you know, that's it's a pretty close neighbor. So I'm right there and I, I see the car coming and everything. I already walked to the other side of the road. And uh, it's, it's coming from a long way, so I got time. And it's actually ducked off to where the lights aren't, aren't coming. And uh, I kind of paused right there for a second. And I turned to get to walking. Again, I'm on the other side of the road, and I'm not worried about the car no more. Well, now the lights start coming up in the air, and I know they're fitting to come down. And she'll see me for the first time. So as soon as this happens, I see the biggest shadow I ever saw fly over me. thick, <laughs> And I heard the noise from Jeepers Creepers to that flap. And I looked up, and it was scary. It was scary. I didn't see it. I didn't see anything. I didn't see nothing when I looked up. I can't imagine how fast it was. But I was freaked out. And this happened. This happened not even, it couldn't have been two weeks before my dog man encounter. This happened. It just makes me feel like I don't know. <sighs> they do have a link to the spiritual area, I believe, because I've gotten so much more spiritual in the last few years to the point to where I've, I've been able to tell people things that I shouldn't, I shouldn't know, you know, people around here. But, uh, Anyways, I get back to the house, ended up not being able to find a ride and having to walk all the way back. At this point, I say, I'm not going outside at night no more because that was freaky. And I'll be darned two weeks later. <laughs> it's broad daylight. I walk out the front door. And when I do, not the back, the back door, I'm sorry. The back door, I call up my dogs. They come running from around the side of the house up to, up to me on the back porch. I'm fitting to feed them. Well, I see my cat, and he's, he's way off down there walking up the wood line right here in front of me right now, coming up to my trailer. I'm over here at my mama's house right now. And it's, it's, let me see, that's 10 yards. It's 20. She's 30 yards away, 35 yards away from my house. And the woods are right, literally right behind my house. Like, I don't got much room in between my, my little trailer right here in the woods. And the wood line goes down until it meets the creek. And uh, coming up that wood line on the field, the cat, this is my daughter's cat. She had it since a kitten. I see him. I'm thinking, man, what's he doing? He's starting to run around a good bit more, you know. He's just now starting to get to be a bigger cat. And uh, my daughter loves this cat. And I'm, I'm concerned about it. So I'm, watch I'm just standing there watching it. I actually walk up off the porch and over here around to the side of this building. Uh, and I'm I'm actually trying to sneak up on the cat. Yeah, I'm trying to move in a way to where the cat don't see me so I can just see what it does. And when I come around, I peek around the side of there, I see something in the woods 
behind the cat about, I don't know, 15, 20 foot behind the cat. And it's in the wood line. It's in the wood line, maybe, you know, 10 foot. The cat's maybe 10 foot out the wood line, you know. And it's just creeping through there. At first, I actually thought it was like a few dogs, but it was too tall. It just was moving funny. It was moving funny at first. And I could kind of see the front of it the, at first, like coming straight, you know. So I, I couldn't tell what it was at first until it, so I kind of moved around and I could see it long ways then. And it was crawling. It was about 10 foot long, nine, nine foot from the butt to the head area, and about 10 foot long. The, the back legs came out a little bit further. And now I'm thinking, no, this ain't a pack of dogs. This is like a super dog. And then my next thought was like, hold on. Because even though I started watching your show and we kind of become obsessed with dog, man, I still couldn't relate it together at first because it was crawling. I, you know, I hadn't heard, I hadn't heard about them being on all fours too much at that time, you know. And uh, it was just huge. It was massive. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. You know, it took me took me a minute and this this time that i'm thinking about it now that i've, I've kind of put it together like this thing ain't a bear like it looks like a grizzly bear it's like a red oh yeah it's like a brownish reddish color right and uh the hair was kind of long but not on the belly area not wasn't really that long but it was kind of long in other areas and uh the stomach was just too skinny to be a bear it was too skinny to be a bear in the stomach and the back legs wasn't right. I remember seeing the back legs real good and I seen the shoulders and the arms. It looked pretty natural the way it was moving, but at the same time, I think it was in a stalking mode. So it wasn't, and it kept on putting its head behind like the next tree before it would move. It's like it's like naturally moved in a way to hide its face. I didn't get a very good, clear look at the face. Like I just, just could barely like see tall ears every now and again coming around stuff and uh a lot of hair a lot of hair in the in the head area to where i couldn't tell really and i'm at this point you know i know like okay this cat is in danger and uh, i know what you're thinking like this that's crazy but my daughter adopted a stray cat before that because she loves cats and uh it bit her in the face and i killed it out of anger and I felt terrible about that. So she got this cat. So I don't want that nothing to happen to this cat. And I'm approaching this thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming that way thinking, you know, I don't know what I'm thinking, but I'm thinking, you know, I can I can come that way and discourage it from following the cat. I can come that way and I can maybe just scare it off that my presence can come that way. I wasn't I wasn't feeling really frightful until I got about right there and i'm not sure how sure far away that is but if i could guess how far away that is but i'm telling you i could i i at this point it's at the point where it, it would it would probably notice me if i took another step and so something kind of just like snapped over in me like hold on this is a beast <laughs> this thing is a thing is a monster it is a predator a super predator it, 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 you, you need to turn around. And that's exactly what I did. I turned around immediately. <laughs> I walked right back around in the same path, back up towards the house, and I turned around, and I looked a few times, and I just, I, like, I could kind of see the area it was in, but it's like it kind of like, I don't know what it did, but it's kind of like it just bled out of you. I couldn't see it no more by the time I got to the porch. Couldn't see it at all. And when I went in, my mom was standing right there. She said, oh, we're leaving. We're going to Poppy's house. Her boyfriend's taking my kid and my nephew. So I, you know, I, I I rushed them up out of there. You know, just yeah, yeah. Y'all go ahead and get on up out of here. I came back outside. Well, actually, I looked at the cameras because we got cameras. We don't never really look through none of it, the footage or nothing. But we got you know cameras. You can see all around the house. I sat there looking at the cameras for a while. I poured salt around everything in the house. And I was watching some dog man, some more of your dog man videos because I was like, I really just seen one. And I've been sitting here watching these videos and now I just really seen one. And uh, I reached out to you. I hope I didn't leave out any details about that dog man. Let me think. Okay, 
It was five foot tall in the front area. I mean, 10 foot long to the butt. The legs came out further in the back and at least four foot tall in the back area. I never seen it stand up, but I seen it do something weird as I was leaving, but I wasn't, you know, focused on it. At that time, it did move its body in a strange way and it was no longer crawling. At that point, I, you know, Vic, like I told you, I just, I felt the, I knew I, I entered the danger zone is what I did. I entered that danger zone. And that's all I really wanted to do was discourage anything that I thought was fixing to happen, like uh, an attack on the cat. But I was terrified that night. I ended up actually getting off the dog man stuff to listen to uh, the word of God. I was kind of scared. But I joined the group and everything, Dogman Encounters on Facebook. I believe it was somebody on there or it was somebody I told my experience to. They said, did you ever have nightmares? And I, I heard maybe I maybe I heard somebody on a video or something talk about having nightmares or, or somebody asked me. But when somebody asked me if I had nightmares about it, I realized then that I was like, no, I didn't. I never had any nightmares after that, but I was pretty paranoid about them. But I never had any nightmares. And then the more I thought about it, I was like, man, I used to have nightmares about a giant wolf all the time when I was a kid. And then I could remember my nightmares all of a sudden. Like, like I, it's like I suppressed them, you know, between the ages of seven, eight, nine or something, you know, five or whatever. I don't know. It's like I suppressed them. The nightmares I used to have because a giant, terrible looking, terrible, like snarling, scrunched up face but it would look more like a regular wolf, but with yeah, the big ears. And it would just come straight out of the darkness and just look at me and, like, <laughs> scare the mess out of me. And I would either wake up or that would just be the end of the dream, and I'd wake up later, and it got to where I had dreams like that a lot. I remember telling people about them because I had them so much. They said, when you have dreams repetitively, it means something, you know? And the more I thought about that, I remembered I remembered, I remember being small like that, and I remember my dreams and stuff, and I remembered being at my grandma's house in Westgate, Talladega, Alabama. It was part of the Downs, really, but you know, it's there's some wilderness around there. You know, I didn't really think nothing about it. I'm in my playroom. It's on the end of the house. You know, we're really poor. We're the only white people in the area. We're not even white. We're, we're mixed up pretty bad. Mexican and other stuff. I don't even. I can't even tell you my. It's easier to tell you what I'm not. But it was it was tough around there. Or whatever. I have a few memories of being a kid and being over there just because of my grandma. I had a great grandma. The playroom back there had all kinds of toys and stuff back there for me. My grandma kept me back there more than my mama did. She was going through some stuff. And uh, that bedroom back there, it was it was up off the ground. There was a window. In the back of the room it was a long room, about 20, 30 foot room with the door. They kept it shut. Just to let me play in there, you know. Well, I remember I was small at the time, but I remember this window was a really high up off the ground. Vic. It was it was really high because I could climb up a fence and stand on the fence and then grab the, the window thing and pull myself in it, but be too scared to try to climb up in it. And maybe I'm three or four years old at this time. And so that's my memory of the, you know, after this, it's my memory of the window, how tall it was. It was a tall window. But I just got a weird feeling, I guess. I really can't tell you. I remember just turning around, sitting in the floor with some toys or something. I just turned around, there was toys everywhere. And when I looked at the window, I seen a huge face. And I say face because there wasn't a lot of hair on it. And the nose was so far apart. It was, it was strange. That's why I didn't really, maybe I suppressed it. I really didn't relate it with, 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 with dog man at first. But now I can remember, now I can remember how big this head was. And I almost, almost, almost wanted to say it had on like something on its head. But it might, now that I think about it, I think it was just like, black fur around his head sticking off but the face was like you could see it was like a purple and gray and and it was just wrinkled up all around the face 
and it and it opened and it had huge teeth that like almost were like crossing as it as it would move its mouth and uh it it did the thing that some people talk about where it curls up its lips and smiles that's what it did it had huge eyes i can't remember the color i think they were black i think they were black it's, it was it was so frightening i asked my mom about it after i remembered i said mama did I ever tell you about anything I seen in my playroom when I was real little living with grandma? He said, Grandma said you come up out of there one time and would not go back in there and play. She said that you seen a monster. And then she said, and it's true, because I would come over there and you would not go in there and play for like two or three weeks. You wouldn't even go in the room. So I don't remember none of that, but they told me that. And I, now I remember it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like some 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 trauma or something, but and now it's it's, a, it's around here too. The other day, actually, I went camping with my buddies down here. I'm trying to kind of like I've been going out down there a little bit more lately. I'm not really trying to provoke another encounter, but I want to want to be able to have freedom here too, or come to an understanding of whatever is out here, but. I brought some friends out here, and that might not have been a good idea. And we camped, but that's the only way I'm camping out there. Uh, you know, it's, it's, hard, it's hard enough for me to walk down or, you see, now I'm having to walk down in this field. I'm not driving down through there like I usually used to if I ever went down there. And I never stayed too long in there. I'm fishing no more. I'm going to take my daughter down there to fish. And I can't stand to do it, but maybe an hour. We've had deer run right behind us, like, full speed as we're fishing like not worried about us like i told you i just there's a predator around here you know well we went down there and got the camping we're actually not even in the property we went out into the wood line so far i was trying to find a really nice spot and it's trying to get dark i sling bladed off a bunch of stuff and brought a big cardboard box to lay down and they're putting together a tent and i had them all go get firewood too you know some younger cats I know their brother. They look up to me a little bit. I preach to them and tell them things and give them knowledge. So uh, we're down there putting stuff together. Some of these guys are just lazy. <laughs> lazy. One of them's got a broke collarbone. Healing from it. And uh, we just hear a, a weird, a really weird screech. It was a screech, maybe. It sounded like something was in pain almost, but it didn't sound like a normal animal. It kind of like, it, it sounded funny. It sounded really funny. It was not regular. And as soon as we heard it, and it, it sounded close. It sounded like just on the other side of the hill. Yeah, I mean, there's a thick thing of woods, and then it kind of like, I don't know. But uh, we're right there off the creek. And uh, we, we hear that they all look at me just like <laughs> big eyes because, you know, I've told all of them about my dog man experience and you know, my other dog man experiences or Bigfoot experiences and religious experiences. I've had crazy things happen. I'm not sure why. Nobody knows. But there's a lot of stuff out there that they don't tell you about, right? I'm down there. We hear the screech, right? So I kind of just kind of play it off like it ain't a big deal. And then fellas kind of do the same thing, you know. Well, I leave two of them. I tell them, like, look, you never, never go anywhere alone out here. We're moving twos. There's four of us. We're moving twos. We're running back to the house to get some water. And uh, we're cooking hamburgers, hot dogs and stuff. We got it going on, man. We got a little separate fire with like a little grate, you know, thing, you know, with the charcoal just straight on. I put them on top of some little sticks. You know, we're cooking the hamburger straight off that thing. Hot dogs, it's going down. And uh, but this wasn't long ago. This is right before I started my fast. So I'm still fasting now. It's starting to get dark. We go get the stuff, come back. It's starting to get dark. Well, it is dark at this point. We come back through the woods at night, you know. I'm freaked out about it, but you know, we're together. We got a machete. I got a 22. That's all I got, but I took a gun with me. I got a machete, which I give to one of them before I leave, or I leave the gun. I leave one of them a machete or give my buddy the machete. I got a sword. That's kind of weird, I know. 
but it makes me feel better. And uh, we're coming down through there, and we're, we're, hearing, we're starting to hear some funny stuff around there. And they start saying, oh, yeah, dog, man, let's see. I said, look, hey, don't do that. Don't encourage that, man. They say if you talk about dog man like that, he might just show up. So, you know, I'm kind of on edge now. I'm on high alert, actually, because this, this done got pitch black. I want none. I'm going to get no firewood now. You hear me? And the fire's getting low and stuff. One of them's done went into the tent, went to sleep. And, uh, <laughs> calm down. It's okay. I hope it's okay. <laughs> yeah, me too. And she can probably see something I can't. It's a big field and there's fog on it now. Calm down. It's okay. These two dogs. All right, so they get off in the tent, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to sit up a little while, you know. The fire is kind of. Di- I, I done made a nice fire. I had to go get wood and stuff. Now the fire is, you know, strong and stuff. And uh, it's about two o'clock, two thirty. Now I'm sitting on the outside of the tent, and I just, I feel vulnerable there. But I've been sitting up about thirty minutes, past everybody going in the tent and laying down. I finally crawl up in there. And by the time I crawl up in there, there's already somebody snoring. And I, I lay down right there for a minute. It's four men in this tent. It's not a small tent, but it's not a big tent. But, you know, we fit in there. <laughs> and uh, I'm sitting there and finally zipped up the tent. And I'm, I'm hearing some stuff, but I'm not really worried about it. Now all three of them are snoring, right? All three of these boys are snoring. And all of a sudden, I hear the biggest... I know it was a rock because I heard it hit the rocks under the water. And I I, I really, I, it was a huge splash, Vic. It was a huge splash. Like, this had to have been a rock. Like, if you if something jumped in the water, it wouldn't be that loud. It was a giant rock. What are y'all looking at? Quit that. Y'all freaking me out. We had to talk about it and be outside because I really feel like these things watch us all the time way more than we know especially me and i don't know why i feel like that <laughs> but you know i seek my refuge from the lord and he, he he saved me in the past and he saved me before you know i'm i'm really alive today because of him and i, I do as well but i'm getting off topic i heard another rock this was the biggest rock i i can't tell you how big this rock was it's if I had to guess, it was a 400-pound rock hitting the water. Like, it, after it hit the water, it instantly was smacking the rocks up under. It was loud. It was so loud, it was scary. I couldn't believe they didn't wake up. I immediately shook to, um, and they didn't wake up, not a bit. I mean, granted, you know, they had a few drinks and stuff, but they didn't even budge. And then I heard another rock. It's even closer. It's not as big, but it's it's a big rock. It hit the water with some force. And then uh, I heard another one. I I actually, I managed to wake up my buddy Nathan. And we hear the other one. He's snoring again within three seconds. But it was right outside the tent, like right in the creek outside the tent. The rock was thrown right over there. And now I'm thinking like, oh, Lord, throwing rocks. And that first one was so big. All I can think is that a rock is fishing the land on the tent and freaking kill us. Freaking kill at least two of us. So I lay down, you know, I'm trying to listen through all the snoring and stuff and I, I can hear some cracking and stuff. And they leave hamburger patties out and stuff like that. All kinds of stuff, you know. But uh <laughs> I had the gun and everything, you know. I'm not fitting really use it or nothing like that, but I got the gun and everything. I'm <laughs> right there with it. I'm laying down making no noise for, I don't know how long I stayed up, but I finally dozed off and went to sleep. The next day, I found some very interesting tracks, but I didn't take my phone with me or I would have took pictures of them, you know. I didn't take my phone with me. I wish I had walked back and got my phone and took a picture of this. If this ain't a dog man track, all I can think of is it's uh, maybe a bear. I and mean, I don't know. I've never seen a bear track. I don't, it's just if I had to guess, you know. 
but I don't I don't know about that last experience if it relates because I kind of thought Bigfoot. But at the same time, the last thing I seen over here was a dog man. So I don't I don't I don't I'm not sure. I'm not I'm still unsure. There's so much we don't know about in this place I'm at, I'm at now. It's like it's the perfect area. We got we got so much livestock and the creeks that run through here in the fields and stuff is is literally like a highway for deer and animals and stuff like that like I, I was thinking people were sneaking out through here and hunting it and stuff when I first moved here because of stuff limbs being broken and past being through the wood line of the creek and stuff you know but now that I think about it I'm thinking man, man maybe this isn't isn't hunters and all these footstep looking tracks maybe this isn't people coming out here at all you know it is pretty remote but yeah, that's all i have as far as my experiences but like i said i think that whatever's over here doesn't really have a problem with us and i like that i haven't felt really threatened out here at all yet but at the same time i feel like <sighs> creatures monsters and these things like i don't know i don't feel i, I don't know if they why like i know how some people have multiple encounters and see now i've had multiple encounters and like i don't know what to think about some of them because it's like this sprung on you i only found out about dog man not long before which i always kind of believed it was a like a werewolf type thing which i i don't know if i believe that people transformed into them but you know i never heard about dog man until i found your show and i was just able to relate with it in so many ways, I wanted to share my encounter with others, too, if it helps anybody. Because all of them has helped me a lot. That's all I got, Vic. Well, it's awfully admirable that you're concerned about helping people, so I'm impressed. <laughs>